The Gurkhas, respected by their allies, feared by their foes. Many call them the bravest of the brave. Boys from the hills of Nepal, trained by the British to be the consummate global warriors, Gurkhas. The mere mention of the name Gurkhas is enough to set off a rush of emotions and stories from those who have fought against them and with them. Our enemy um, against whom we've been operating um, has been totally unaware that the Gurkha has not only um, carried out a reconnaissance of his position, but actually crawled inside it um, and listened to his conversations in the trenches, taken some of his equipment and got away with a complete layout of, uh, of the position on a plan. For sport, Gurkhas used to slip through Japanese lines in World War II and cut the laces on the boots of Japanese sentries. There are even more chilling tales about what Gurkhas would surgically do to their enemies with their distinctive curved knives called kukris. The British first learned how fierce the Gurkhas are in combat when they fought against them in Nepal in 1814. After narrowly defeating them despite their overwhelming odds, the British asked the Gurkhas to join them. One British officer wrote, I never saw more steadiness or bravery exhibited in my life. Run they would not, and of death they seemed to have no fear, though their comrades were falling all around them. Perhaps the greatest mystery surrounding the Gurkhas is how such naturally passive people have become such fierce fighters. Legionnaires are a band of brothers who have forsworn their countries, families, and their independence for something they believe far more deserving of their loyalty, the French Foreign Legion. The Legion is a family, and history and tradition are for us the link with our early brothers. It's like a, a father with his son, or a, a, a son with his grandfather, you see. A legionnaire, he's somebody, he's part of a family. We're only 8,000. That's what makes a legionnaire special. It's like uh, any other family. If somebody, doesn't, if somebody doesn't work or pull their weight within that family, the family does not work. If the French Foreign Legion appears to be slightly out of step with the 20th century, it's because they hark back to the ranks of the first professional soldiers. The precarious French monarch, Louis-Philippe, wasn't the first to discover the political merits of hiring foreigners to fight his dirty wars. But his creation of France's first foreign legion in 1831 was the first attempt to turn bands of gypsy mercenaries into a legitimate military unit. Today's legion has drawn from more than 100 countries but all, even the French recruits, have to renounce their citizenship for Legia Patria Nostra. The Legion is our homeland. More than just a motto, these men have given up their passports and right to foreign travel outside of the Legion during the first five years of their commitment. Long known to be a sanctuary for renegades, incorrigibles, and black sheep, the Legion is less concerned with a man's past than his future. The Soviet military draws from its best trained units, the Spetsnaz, or special purpose forces, for the most difficult missions, often behind enemy lines. 
Most Spetsnaz troops come from the elite Soviet airborne divisions. Their choreography of individual combat skills is more than just... The Soviet airborne is the only element in the Soviet military allowed to distinguish themselves by wearing special shirts. We can see the person and the striped shirt, a person who is trained much better than other servicemen in other branches. He must possess qualities such as mobility and courage and represent the best of the Soviet troops. For 70 years, the inner workings of the Soviet military have been a mystery to Western analysts. Their equipment, tactics and training have always been shielded with secrecy. Today, with political and economic changes sweeping their country, the Soviet airborne faces an uncertain future. Regardless of the outcome, they remain loyal to their profession, ready to meet any military challenge if called upon. They are, after all, members of one of the finest fight world. All volunteers, they are selected from the best conscripts after first distinguishing themselves in basic training. Many of them started training well before their military service in schoolboy cadet corps and by joining local parachute clubs. 